Horse walks into a bar. The barman says, why the long face? The horse says, I am Muhammad, a famous show horse renowned for my ability in computation. I can spell, do arithmetic, and perform complex calculations by tapping my hooves. Give me a mathematical problem to solve, and if I get the answer right, you give me a free drink. The barman says, Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, a talking horse. Muhammad was a horse born in Germany in the late 19th century, and while he couldn't actually talk and probably didn't frequent establishments where alcohol is served, likely due to his being a horse, he could perform complicated mathematical calculations as well as read and spell, likely in spite of his being a horse. He is regarded by many as the most intelligent horse to ever live. I mean, I know some humans that can't spell or do maths. Raised in the town of Elberfeld by Karl Kroll, Muhammad was one of numerous horses Kroll seemingly taught to perform incredible feats of intelligence, although Muhammad was thought to be the smartest. Kroll demonstrated this to onlookers by asking the horse questions, like what's the sum of two numbers? Muhammad would answer by tapping his front feet, his left foot representing tens and the right foot representing ones. So if the answer to a question was 21, Muhammad would tap his left foot twice and his right foot once. Using this method of communication, Muhammad was able to solve all sorts of arithmetic problems. Addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. He could also read and spell by tapping his hooves, but perhaps his most incredible feat was his ability to solve square roots. Kral also claimed that Muhammad tapped his hooves not just for performance, but to communicate spontaneously. He would supposedly tattle on the other horses for being lazy, or on the grooms for being overzealous with the whip. Given Muhammad's ability, you have to ask yourself if you're dumber than a horse. The answer is probably yes if you haven't decided by now that there must be some trick at play here. There's no way this horse was actually thinking through these problems. Kral must have been giving him the answer somehow. Well, a number of scholars visited Muhammad, tested his abilities, and came away convinced his talent was genuine. Among them, Swiss neurologist and psychologist Edward Clapperhead. Now, no one got the chance to really take time and go through rigid scientific experiments to figure out how Muhammad was able to do all of this, because he was taken into service as a draft animal in World War One. so the horse was a fucking war hero too. With this, Muhammad was sort of lost to the annals of history, and nobody knows what ultimately happened to him, but given that an estimated 6 to 8 million horses died in the war, around half of all those who served in it, the outlook isn't good. This means no one knows for sure how Muhammad performed his complex calculations. Except me. You see, Muhammad is not the only horse famous for performing calculations. Clever Hans was another German horse who lived during the same time as Muhammad, trained by mathematician and mystic Wilhelm von Osten. Similarly to Muhammad, Clever Hans could perform basic mathematics, read and spell by tapping his feet. He could also tell the time and recite dates of the calendar. One of von Osten's preferred tricks involved presenting Clever Hans' favourite paintings, whereupon Clever Hans would spell out the painter's name. Unlike Muhammad, however, Clever Hans was subjected to vigorous scientific testing, commissioned by the German Board of Education. The so-called Hans Commission formed a panel of 13 people, including school teachers, a veterinarian, a circus manager, and a psychologist. Amazingly, in September 1904, the Hans Commission concluded there were no tricks involved in Hans' performance, just as scholars had concluded Muhammad was the real deal. However, the Hans Commission then passed the investigation off to biologist and psychologist Oscar Funkst, who used a series of tests to determine how Clever Hans was answering the questions. He performed the tests away from spectators to make sure someone in the audience wasn't signalling the horse, and sure enough, Hans could still answer. He then used blinders to see if Hans could still answer the questions without being able to see Von Austin. He couldn't. Bingo, so Von Austin was somehow signalling the horse, even if Funks didn't know exactly how he was doing it, but he had obviously trained the horse to respond to some secret gestures or something, right? Well... Clever Hans was then tested with questioners other than Von Austin. The horse was still getting the answers right, as long as Hans could see the questioner, it didn't seem to matter who was asking the questions, so Von Austin wasn't using secret signals. Now we've a real mystery on our hands. 
Fungst then tested Hans with questions that the questioner didn't know the answer to in advance. The horse failed, so the horse wasn't able to think through the problems himself, but as long as he could see the questioner and the questioner knew the answer, he was somehow able to read the questioner's mind. So Hans wasn't actually intelligent, he was just psychic. Ah, send him off to the glue factory. I'm just kidding, Clever Hans was an incredibly intelligent horse, let me explain how he was doing this. Funks determined that Clever Hans was closely watching his questioner as he tapped his feet. When he was getting close to the correct amount of taps, the questioner's posture and facial expression would very subtly build up tension, which was released when the horse arrived at the exact amount of taps, giving him the cue to stop tapping. Funks tested this by playing the part of the horse and having people ask him what number they were thinking of. Tapping with his hand and monitoring the questioner very closely, he noticed there were some tells in the questioner's body language that gave the answer away. The questioners weren't doing this intentionally, it was an unconscious reaction and one that was very subtle. So unconscious and so subtle that even when Funks was sure he knew what these tells were, he still couldn't suppress them enough to fool clever hands. His body language would betray him no matter how he tried to prevent it. This was an incredibly perceptive horse. Funks arrived at the conclusion that even Von Austin didn't know how his horse was getting the right answers. That's right, the horse's master wasn't in on the trick, he himself genuinely believed the horse was really smart. He didn't realise he hadn't trained the horse how to do maths, he had trained it to respond to his body language. Outsmarted by a horse. Yoink. Even after Funkst explained this to Von Austin, he supposedly wasn't convinced. He continued to show clever hands around Germany, attracting large crowds who were amazed by the horse's talents, even though they didn't truly understand what those talents were. Unfortunately, like Muhammad, Clever Hans was drafted into World War I in 1916, and his fate is unknown. Well, that's fucking sad. Oscar Funk's findings have gone on to be known as the Clever Hans effect and illustrate the need for double blinds in experiments in which neither the subject nor the experimenter is aware of the status of the subject in order to eliminate the influence of bias as neither will have preconceived expectations or predictions. The Clever Hans effect has been observed in drug sniffing dogs who pick up cues from their handler and produce false positives. Basically poor training may lead to a dog picking out packages based on their handler's expectations rather than their own senses. On the job, this can lead to dogs simply picking out packages that the handlers are already suspicious of. So the horses were actually pretty smart, they even fooled their trainers. So smart they've gone down in scientific history and when you put it like that, yeah, you are dumber than a horse. Well, if you like this video, I have many more for your dumb ass to enjoy. I'm now also on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok where I'll be uploading minute long summaries of my videos. So if you've missed any or you just weren't arsed to sit through an 8 minute long explanation, following me on these platforms is a good way to still stay informed. If you'd prefer to stay on YouTube, then subscribe and see a new video like this every week. Until next time, stay safe.